Nice. 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 Excuse me, can you not see I'm busy chimping here? This video will tell you why it's a good thing to chimp. What is chimping? The definition of chimping is something along the lines of every time you take a photo, you then check the back of the camera to see if you took a good picture or not. This video will tell you why chimping is a good thing and no, this is not clickbait. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLike.com. So why is chimping good? And before we get to that, I'm sure some of you are saying, but Matt, chimping is for losers. Only beginners chimp on the back of their LCD. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I don't normally chimp. I'd say I'm a minimal chimper at most. And why should digital photographers chimp? Because film photographers never chimped. They never had the option. This video is particularly aimed at the Leica M camera users. But that said, even if you're not a Leica user, sometimes chimping can be useful. If you've seen this channel before, you know I'm a big fan of the Leica SL camera. But that said, I still also enjoy Leica M mount cameras. What's the difference? With a EVF style camera, which is like a Q, like a SL, like a CL, what you see is what you get, i.e. you see your photo through the viewfinder before you take the picture in terms of focus, exposure, composition, everything. So if you're using an EVF camera, I would argue you don't need to chimp. I will recap where you may want to chimp on EVF cameras at the end of the video, so stay tuned. But for now, let's talk about M cameras. A quick lesson for anybody that's never used a Leica M camera. They're a rangefinder camera. So you're looking through this little glass window here. You can see a rough idea of your composition, depending on what lens you use. If you line up the little patch in the center on your subject, that will confirm if your subject is in focus, hopefully. But it doesn't give you a true representation of exposure. There is a little light meter inside the viewfinder, which tells you if the camera thinks the exposure is correct, but then you're limited to what the camera thinks is the correct exposure, not what you think is the correct exposure. You can actually bypass the, the limitations of like M cameras by getting yourself a EBF. These little devices will not fit the earlier M8 and M9, but M240, most models onwards, there's different ones for different cameras. Once you look through the EBF, now it's the same as using the Leica SL, and now what you see is exactly what you get and now you don't need to chimp. So that all sounds pretty simple and straightforward. I've shot Leicas I think for almost 10 years now so I'd say I'm reasonably proficient with using Leica cameras. I would like to think that I chimp less than most but on this one occasion I really really wished I'd been more of a chimper and I'll tell you why. So last weekend Hugo joined me for a workshop in London I took my M app camera, so we both had the similar setup. And I took my LCAN Light Lens Lab 50 F2 to use on the M240. And for completeness, I was using the Light Lens Lab Cook Speed Pancro 2 on my Leica M3. It's a pretty nice setup. I like to use the same focal length on the film body and the digital body so I can visualize the digital. And then if the model does something good or something I like the look of, I then shoot the good photos on film because film for me is far more important. So that was all great. But then a slight change of plan. I showed my very nice tiny Elcan lens to Hugo and he's new to the Leica cameras and was trying to understand which might be the best 50mm lens for him to get. And I suggested, oh, you'll probably like this lens. It's a very nice size, beautiful rendering, and I still need to do a full video. <laughs> Cut the story short, I let Hugo have my Elcan and so I was only limited to then the two lenses that I had left, the Cook lens, which I wanted to keep on my M3 because I wanted to do some film testing before I do the full Cook video for YouTube. I needed to see how it performs on film. So the only other lens I had in my bag was this tiny light lens lab, 35mm f2, 8 element lens. So I was like, no problem, I'll shoot 35mm on the digital, even though it's not my favourite choice, and I'll shoot the 50 on film. Great, easy, no problem. Now in recent years I've got in the habit of using the EVF on my Leica M240 because the range front is very slightly out and so I know if I focus with the EVF I'll get perfect focus. But then I thought I'm using a 35mm lens. If I stop it down to f4 I don't need to use the EVF. I don't have the lag of the live view. I can shoot it like a proper M camera 
use a rangefinder fire much faster and use it as the camera was designed for. So shooting away quite happily with our model of Sonia. Sonia had some great connections so got her some VIP access to like a, a no-go shooting area especially for our shoot so I was keen to give her some really good pictures and make the most of this opportunity. I was shooting 35mm on the digital and then as mentioned if she did anything great I shot it on film. At the end of the shoot we're looking at the back of the camera as models do and then I let them video the back of the camera while they photo their favourites. We we're all really excited and hyped up from the photos. Everything looked great on the LCD. All good. Train back home, put the card in the computer, loaded the photos into Lightroom. I shoot raw but I'd shot in black and white on the day. So the way I process my photos is I apply a Mr. Like a black and white preset to the first photo. I copy and paste across the say 300 photos that we'd shot, sync it and then all the photos are converted to black and white and are more or less ready to give to the models. And then I was eagerly scanning through the photos thinking oh that's a nice one, that's a nice one. And I got to the bit where I'd started using the 35mm lens and using the 50 on film because I wanted to shoot film and suddenly I looked and it's like that one's a bit out of focus and that one's also a bit out of focus. I'm, like, I'm shooting f4 on a 35mm lens, how can it be out of focus? And they looked fine on the back of the camera. That one's out of focus. That one's out of focus. If I'd chimped, I would have noticed that they were out of focus and I could have fixed the problem. So what had happened? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, it's an M camera mat. You knocked it and so your rangefinder patches out even more than it was before. And that's where you misfocused. That's the first tip on why M camera users should chimp for the first few photos when they start using a camera on a particular day just in case you've knocked it and not realised in your bag just chimp and by chimp I mean select the photo on the LCD and zoom in I almost never ever zoom in if I do chimp I just have a quick look to check the composition and the lighting you need to zoom in to check if it's actually in focus especially on a range finder camera because of the calibration problems Today's problem was not a calibration problem, it was something different. This is my setup. Write in the comments below if you can work out before I tell you in the next few seconds what was wrong with this setup. Now I should tell you this is a collapsible lens, so you need to extend the lens fully like that before you'll get sharp photos. And I think what had happened was it had been knocked in a little bit like that, so it still looked okay. On the back of the camera it looked roughly okay, good enough for the model to be like, oh that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. But it was just slightly misfocusing, it was overshooting on every photo. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you know I'm not a stranger to collapsible lenses. I was using the Tessa lens on the SL recently and no problems. The reason there was no problems is because on the EVF camera you can see if you've not fully extended the lens. This is only a problem if you're using a rangefinder camera. If you're shooting film, you're kind of screwed for, better, <laughs> for want of a better word, unless you notice before you do it. So if you're shooting film, make sure you really do lock it out and pull it as far as you can and then turn it before you start shooting. If you're worried about your rangefinder calibration on your film camera, turn your focus to infinity and make sure that the rangefinder patch clearly lines up with the thing that you're photographing. If it does, then if you're shooting film, you should be good to go and you shouldn't have to worry. You can't chimp anyway, so there's not much else you can do. So was the whole day a complete disaster? Luckily, no. So half the day was a workshop because it was a shorter workshop, kind of three quarters of the day. But then I carried on shooting after for another couple of hours with the model. So for the second half of the shoot, I was using the LCAN on the M240. So all those photos were fine. You can see a couple of those photos here. And then the photos that I did miss, luckily a couple of them I'd use the EVF because I was switching lenses just a little bit. And those photos were obviously in focus because I checked it. And then I was also shooting film. So the photos that I missed on digital, luckily I got them on film. So not all is lost and the model still gets some nice photos. So do you need to chimp and who needs to chimp? For me, if you're shooting a digital EVF camera, 
you really, really don't need to chimp unless you're using some quirky lens, which is maybe very, very soft at the edges and you want to check that the part of the focus that you're interested in is in focus. I'll cover this when I do my Biotar video very soon. That again looked like it was in focus, but it was actually a bit soft. So if you're using quirky, very soft vintage lenses, you might want to check the focus on a couple of the first frames. And then after that, you're good to go. You don't really need to chimp because you're seeing it already through the EVF. So why would you need to chimp? And then M users, as already mentioned, if you're using quirky lenses, check at the start of the session and also for the range for a chimp at the start of the session. Also for me, if the lighting condition suddenly changes a lot, I find it may be useful to chimp again on an M camera if you're not using an EVF, just to check that the exposure's to your liking. Um, but for me, that's the only real reason you need to chimp. As mentioned, I think the definition of chimping is checking the photo after every picture that you take. The only time I think looking at the LCD is useful is if you're a model photographer the same as me, and you use it as a positive feedback loop. What I mean by this is, if you shoot the new model, they don't know if you can take good pictures or not. Sometimes they don't even speak the same language if you're like me and I shoot in different countries. And there they are standing in front of a camera like this. They're doing hopefully something a bit better than that, hoping that you're going to take a good picture. If I was shooting purely film, they have no clue if I'm doing a good job. So the advantage of having a modern digital camera, you can then chimp, i.e. show them the back of the LCD, say, look, you look pretty hot, you're looking pretty amazing and their eyes will light up and they'll up their game throughout the shoot to get better, better, better because they're just feeling so confident and so beautiful. It really works really, really well. So that's the kind of biggest reason an LCD is useful compared to say film. Hence, I never shoot only film with a model. What's about you guys? Are you pro chimping or anti chimping? Let us know in the comments below. Huge thanks to my awesome patrons. And if you wanna see more on this lens, I'll link the video next.